All right, you cool cats and kittens. No, I'm not fucking Joe Exotic, but I am going to get this hood fucking done. Um, so I'm going to do the repair process for the inside now that we got it to the point where we can close it. I still have to grind on my hinges. Um, they are bowed in, so I have to grind so that the bolts will allow it to go further outwards and then... I have to grind the driver's side hinge forward. Um, I'm pretty sure I mentioned it in the last video, but my car has actually been... I, I wrecked it, and then um, the fenders I bought, because I'm cheap, I bought two crunched fenders that I knew I could straighten out. And I got a smoking deal on two fenders. I needed a little bit of rust repair, but they were crunched in the nose. So one side of the car, the fender likes to sit further back. One side likes to sit further forward. One theory is when I crashed the car on the highway back in like 09, I pushed the firewall back a little bit and I don't think I pulled it out enough, but everything lined up and it's, I can adjust the hood to make up for the differences and my gaps stay even. Um, it's not a big deal, but now uh, it's manifesting itself because these bolt hole openings where I, uh, where the bolt hole openings were, you know, the hood bolts into, are now in a different relation to these because these are slightly different center to center than center to center on the uh, hinges. I, you know, got it close and I knew I was gonna have to do some grinding, but that's not a big deal. This thing closed good in between the fenders without any major adjustments. So it, the rest of it is gonna be fairly straightforward tweaking on the hinges. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take this back off I'm going to grind both the underside of this bar and underneath here. I'm going to go ahead and do my urethane and let it sit for a couple of hours. Um, I'm going to go ahead and lay down my urethane. I'll show you guys that whole prep procedure. Um, but I just got out here and I'm going to urethane this and let it sit. It usually cures within a couple of hours. And then I'll start doing some fiberglass work. I'll show you guys the reinforcements I bought. And uh, we'll talk about that in the next segment of this video so for now i'm gonna sign off uh we'll follow it up all right guys so as you can see use gloves i got window urethane all over my hands and i got a cut in there so cleaning my hands is gonna suck wear gloves this stuff is i didn't intend for this to happen uh one of my uh, caught guns broke at the end and it was wedging the cartridge and when i went to go pull it back a ton of urethane came out and i tried cleaning it and Luckily, I had another cock gun in the basement. So, here's what I got. This is urethane in. They're lightly clamped in place. This stuff holds really, really good. So, at this point, you know, I talked about reaming out the hinges to move everything. I remeasured everything, and it's silly for me to try to um, ream out the hinges that much when right now I can move everything. So, what I did was I referenced the edges, right? I used my holes where I screwed it in place for alignment checks. So if I slid it directly over, we stayed. So pretty much both of my square tubes butted up to the edge of these. I'm going to be within the length I need. It's not going to change. What I'm changing here is the width. So I evenly paired these up. Um, these are on both sides. They're three and let's see. Oh, fuck. Uh, 11 sixteenths, I believe is, uh, yeah, 3 and 11 sixteenths from this edge to the outer edge of the hood. And same thing on here. And when I measured center to center on the nut certs, that puts us within 47 and 3 quarters. We are within a quarter of an inch from the center to center of the hinges. Um... Now, why didn't I go all the way center to center on 48? Well, I'll explain. As you can see, these um, the holes that were here were probably closer to the edge. So you figure an eighth of an inch out further, an eighth of an inch out further. But if I did that, it would move this tube further out to where it starts to lie on the edge. I mean, I did grind it down, but um, I didn't want to do that. I'm within a quarter of an inch. Uh, that just means that I have to remove an eighth of an inch from each hinge on the outsides. And then I have to slot them a little longer front to back. But that's no big deal. Um, again, I'm getting creative. You can see 
I ground down the area I'm going to work on. Um, mainly what I'm going to, and obviously I went further into the original material. Not only did I grind it, because I'm still, I'm kind of on the gel coat here, which you can fiberglass over. But I cut slots into it in different patterns just to give it a little bit more bite. Same over here. Um, obviously, you can see here I got it clamped in place. My urethane is blobbed out. I ended up running this aluminum piece as a, you know, extra bracing underneath. I am going to have to trim part of this off because you can see it's lifting it up, uh, which really isn't an issue, but I bought a couple different sizes. Now, I did say I was going to do this lip here, but I'm not going to because it, it there, there's buildup in here and it doesn't want to lay flat. So I'm not going to worry about that. When I fiberglass this all over tomorrow, I'm going to go ahead and repair the insides there. Um, but you can see I ran a reinforcement from the back till like almost the, all the way to the front and that's urethane then and I'm going to fiberglass over all of this. The urethane is just there for a little extra rigidity and you can see I applied my window urethane, window weld. Um, this stuff's awesome. I don't know if I showed you guys the tube. My garage is a fucking absolute mess right now. Um, I haven't cleaned in a couple of weeks but this stuff right here works really well. Um, that's what I used on the AC delete panel I made and that's what I'm going to use here for uh, bonding between the fiberglass and this. I mean this stuff sticks to everything and makes it a little bit more versatile. Now the only problem is this is a high solids adhesive and what that means is when the sun hits this I may see little lines in the fiberglass because the fiberglass is going to move at a higher rate than this stuff but I'm fine with that I need this to be rigid I'm going for practicality safety and strength here um, plus the color of my car is light I you really won't see it if anything and plus these fiberglass hoods are very well made but they change out in the sun they move around and I know this from experience um, you know this is a lightweight racing hood you don't got a lot of layers so um, it's gonna move no question about it so guys get caught up on making these things fit perfect. If you knew you bought a lightweight racing hood, expect it to move around. Don't get caught up on making these things like perfectly flat with your bodywork. There, you park it out in the sun one day and those UVs hit it, it's gonna ooh, it's gonna move. So there it is, guys. You can see what I'm gonna be doing here. You can see part way through. I can show you guys what I did. Obviously, I just grove, grabbed my uh, grinder, ground it down with 36 grit, and then I'm going to let this sit for a couple of hours, and once it really set, I mean, this stuff is, this stuff's already setting in place. I can barely move this. This stuff is fast, but I'm going to let it sit a couple hours so it breathes, cures up real nice. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'll let you guys go, and uh, I'll follow it up once we're starting to do some fiberglass. Okay, so uh, as you can see, I got both sides set in place. The glue's starting to set up. So I'm starting to get stuff ready to, you know, so I bought a little package of fiberglass mat at the Farm and Fleet. And uh, I cut it right down the middle, and it comes in folds. So every fold, I made a cut. And I, you can see I got various different strips here for a specific reason. I'm going to do like one of my bigger ones first, then those, and then these strips are going to go along the sides. So I'm going to do one layer that overlaps, and then two that go into that top one. I want to keep this top layer thin. I'm mainly worried about tying in the sides. Um, that's to say I think so. If not, I'll, I think I'm going to end up doing two overlaps, and then the strips on the side to reinforce this edge where they're split on both sides. So... You can see I got three different types of cuts that I made. Each side has its own. Wear your freaking Rona gloves. Otherwise, this stuff gets in your fingers. It itches. I mean, just this stuff floating around. It One landed on my cheek and it itched like a motherfucker. So uh, I'm going to go ahead, mix my resin, and then I'll show you guys one side and then go to the other side. And then we'll we'll wrap it up once this is all fiberglass so yeah so it's the wrap up for the hood um, as you can see I got like three layers on here 
Um, I have about one and a half left to go on this side. I ran out of gloves, uh, and you don't want to be getting this shit on your skin. I got a little cut, and it went through my glove. Jesus, fuck, did that burn. So I'm going to leave this for tomorrow. Either way, this hood's going to sit for a little while because I am going to have to sand in here. And you can tell I kind of got a little bit of a mess. We're going to clean it up and sand it in there and just blast it with a little aerosol. That's all you really can do. You really... In my opinion, you don't want to paint the underside of these hoods because they can flake off and you don't want that shit in your engine bay. Just my thought. I know guys are out there that it, oh, you know, good prep, all this, that, and the other. I, to me, I'd just rather be safe than sorry. Simple black aerosol, it's thin. It'll stay on there. So either way, as you can see, it looks pretty good. Um, this side's actually already starting to set up. Um... It pretty, I should have bought a gallon. I underestimated how much I was going to need. But that has about three layers. Um, when I sand this, I'm going to go ahead and sand this as thin as possible. Uh, just for the simple fact that our hinges are going to go there. Uh, and it's going to throw it off maybe a little bit. We'll see. I'm going to just sand it to the point where I can lay a straight edge across it. And it won't be all wonky. So I'll, look, I'll have you guys check it out from this perspective. See, it looks pretty... Pretty stock, you know, nice and straight. You got your ridges. Um, I'm going to do another, like I said, the rest of the layers on that side. This side should be good. I'll do it tomorrow. Either way, I've been out here for four hours chipping away at this thing. And uh, I'll tell you what, man, the urethane set up real nice. And we're I'm pretty happy with it. So I especially got to get a good layer in here. Um because I might cut up some of these to make a couple of strips on the inside because um, this is where it was cracked in two spots back here. This area flexes a lot when you open and close the hood. Other side was fine. Um, I was a little underprepared. It made it harder. This probably could have gotten done in its entirety today, but again, I don't do fiberglass work every day and um, it you know, got a little bit, I only had two pairs of gloves and between cleaning stuff up between layers and having to mix shit, well, you don't want to be touching stuff after you've touched that because then you, it literally, it, it's like that video of the lady that's showing you how the spread of COVID-19 happens with paint on her hands. It's the same concept with fiberglass. The shit gets everywhere. So pretty excited. Um, end goal is hopefully come out here a couple nights this week. Um, and fix the cracks, sand it, and then have it primed by the end of next, uh, by, by the end of the week. Because next weekend, I need to jump back on the Pontiac. I have parts to order. Um, so this is pretty much our, our wrap-up for, for this weekend. The goal was to fix the hood. And um, our goal is pretty much met. I did, wanted to have it ready to put on the car. I'm going to put it on the car one last time once the underside is completely dry, sanded and everything, make sure everything's good. And then once it's on the car, I don't know, I might take it by work and ask if I can do it over there. Um, but I'll, um, I'll still share with you guys the repair process regardless of where I do it. Um, this would just be a much better project. Um, actually, it doesn't really matter. The weather's starting to get better. So I can pull up, uh, um, pull out the car. So we'll uh, we'll go from there, guys. I'll follow it up. So episode two on this fiberglass repair is a wrap.